My name is Jo Gosney and I'm a local historian and I've written a number of books on the history of Farnborough. The whole area of the Prospect Estate was originally farmland back in the 1700s. The original farmhouse was Oak Farm House, formerly Lane's Farm. The original house was built in the 1700s and a large addition was added in the 1800s by Mr Hitchcock who, who purchased it. Part of the farm, when the Hitchcocks owned it, was run as a chicken farm because he sold chickens uh, and, and he was a big egg manufacturer. But in 18, 1944, when the farm was sold, the family continued to live there, uh, but the name was changed to Cherrywood because there was a vast cherry orchard there, uh, which uh, today is uh, slightly over the area where Cherrywood Road starts from the roundabout. The family used to sit under the billiard table during the war when the air raids were on. The, the local air raid wardens also used to use the house as a base. Alongside, uh, through the farm, ran Water Lane down, down to Cove Brook, which probably is indicative of the wet area. In the 1950s, there was an extensive drainage scheme put in place to, uh, to try and drain the land in order that all the local houses could be built. Probably the last part of the estate to be built was the area around the Prospect Community Centre um, and where Cherrywood School is today. When the estate was finished, uh, it, it, it enlarged the area of Farnborough considerably and increased our population and brought together a number of communities within the town and the community centre as such is I, I think helping to um, integrate those communities within the whole overall community of the town. My earliest memories, gosh, that goes back to the 1960s. I think I can recall when it was an open field and they were actually putting in the big pipes to drain off the water. My very earliest memory was of a visit before we moved in to see what it was like. And when we first came round the corner, we thought it was a prison because of the dark brick and the flat roofs. And we weren't sure that it was actually the estate. We applied to the council for a three bedroom house. Much to our surprise, by return of post, we were offered a four bedroom down on this estate. A lot of people said we were mad to come down here, but we looked at the house anyway and it was a very nice house, so we decided that we'd make the move and the neighbours seemed all right. First memory of the estate was probably about five years beforehand when we came on my wife's Christmas work to do, and we were told not to go anywhere out of sight of the school campus because of the problems that were on the estate. I think it was a jubilee party when I remember it was all under the archway and we had a big tent on the in the square and um, I had like, a little flag and I was like waving a little flag about and we've done three-legged ways and that. My earliest memories is really the, the area around Tottenham and the way it was built and the community around there which at that time was um, had quite low esteem. I have a memory of going over to Topland um, when it was started. At that time, it was all woods and marsh mainly. We had a park and an adventure playground in London, but nothing like this. This was like the real thing. You, you, you're somewhere, with, wow, building tree camps. But yeah, it was like an adventure. It was, um, I loved it. It wasn't that anyone was bad people, it was just a lot of people thrown together from different backgrounds, from different parts of London and it was a very new estate at that point so there wasn't there were lots and lots of, of teenagers around um, and so the perception was that there was lots of, of trouble around but in fact that wasn't, that wasn't the case. I think the biggest change obviously was when the GLC uh, decided to buy the farm and actually you know, build this large estate which was the overflow from London. I mean they were doing it in many areas around the southeast of England um, and this area obviously was one of those sites. Um, when they bought the farm and um, started the development it brought in something like about 1500 houses and their families so it was quite a large increase in the population of the local area. We were also then offered the chance to buy our home on the estate and that changed things. It was as though they were investing in the estate and if they wanted to see their investment grow they had to do something about the criminality that was reigning here. 
So we did have a positive spirit. And I think one of the problems is now, the people who are moving in are really not uh, mixing in the same way. They don't need to, you know, they're out at work all day and there's no reason to contact them. So I suppose we don't get to know them. When the GLC was um, abolished, they were given 19, a, a bursary of 19 million pounds to uh, Rushmore Borough Council to do refurb because they knew the houses weren't particularly great in terms of their design, flat roofs and what have you. Um, and that was a major task, you know, moving people out, decanting them, squatters moving in, then trying to work out how we could stop the squatters moving in because there was people owned a house next to a house that was being rented and then was going to be refurbished completely. So, you know, those people had to deal with those issues. So it was really, really hard. It has to prove, it has to um, prove a great lot. I mean, the flats have, Totland has really approved. I mean, I moved um, into Austin in 1999 and I got, oh, you shouldn't move in opposite like the shop, like Totland. And, but since they've got like security and everything in there, you don't get no trouble. We've seen the sort of the central area of the estate all developed. That was a, a field at one time where Water Lane is and, and, uh, and the roads around there and, and, and houses built. The population has changed. Um, we, have, uh, we have an influx of um, other ethnic um, uh, peoples within this area which has caused local tensions but whether they're justified or not, um, I very much doubt. When in 2005, 6, 7, it all used to be the members of the British Girl Weather Society uh, involved in mancap and all the short handicap or you know, uh, involved in any other project, local community. Now I, I can see that there are other Nepalese society more involved in local charity work as well and community as well. There were quite a number of, of activities that went on. There was youth club, there were Petra was the local tenants and residents association and they had children's Christmas parties, discos, uh, they, they tore the estate, letting the council know if street lights were out. There was a very much a, a spirit of we're all in this together and we'll we're make the most of it. I think they're already trying to improve things, you know, we got, you know, we're all living in Totland, funny enough. I'd say there was more community spirit there now on the estate. In this, in, um, everyone knows everyone in Totland. We all know each other's business, whether you like it or not. I think in order to improve it, we've got to get people involved in something that will bring us together. And I think the Lottery Award will do that. There doesn't seem to be much for the elders and they feel quite vulnerable, especially the winter months when it's dark or early, for going out of their houses because of unfortunately the reputation that the estate has had in the past, which does seem to be over the years slowly changing. There are good working class people on this estate. The majority are hard working. We need to give them back a sense of community and a sense that people do care. And this is what I think the big local is going to start to do. I believe the lottery impact will give an aspect that um, it'd be able to help small groups. I know there's a, a local Topman choir, there's a couple of dance groups around the area, adult learning centres, there's a local diabetic society that would, on small grants from the lottery fund that has on the Prospect Estate, will help and achieve their goals more. Generally more community activities uh, involving more of the different cultures that are out there. One of the big problems on this estate is debt, be it with it through um, payday loans at 2,000%, loan sharks, and some of the best ways of getting around this is to use um, a credit union. So maybe we could help with um, funding a, a credit union within the area and helping people get out of debt. Another way we could help is that education there may be needs for people, okay, they can read and write, but they need to learn how to use that skill, especially when applying for jobs. So part of helping this estate and bringing their self-esteem back is to empower them through education, get them out of debt. The old school that was on this site, Oak Farm, used to have a fun run, a fun run and fair in May. 
did that for years and that did bring everybody together for one day and that was brilliant. I'm a great believer in mixing, you know, trying to get people involved because if you try and do your own thing, you're segregating yourself and then, then you will not get any integration at all. Me, I'm a strong believer of that, you know, the, the, the Nepalese people, the former Gurkhas, whoever they are, they should now also try and open their eyes and, you know, listen to to the wider community, plea for help, you know, social work or, you know, voluntary work, you know, even tiny little project like, you know, uh, cleaning up, you know, tidy up project, whatever, garden project, we all should chip in and, you know, in that way, you know, in the eyes of the community, they will see that we are at least trying and then, you know, with that, it could be a, you know, a very good start. You need a lot more parking spaces because there isn't any. I might, you know, when I get visitors, they can't get out. And I think they need more areas for kids because there's a big park in Totland, but there's nothing anywhere else as far as I know. When you see young kids um, sort of wandering around who, who don't seem to have activities or don't seem to be able to make activities for themselves, then possibly sort of play leadership might be a, an area where, they, where money could be spent to actually get kids to, to be out in the fresh air and doing activities and to be able to motivate and in, enjoy activity. I'd like to think we could get that community spirit that you get in small communities like the villages that I've lived in and I'd like to think that maybe people that are not happy with where they're living this estate can suddenly see the potential that the area can give them.